Hello everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I am a little late getting our middle block uh, out on a video. It's been one of those years with COVID. So 2020 shall, shoot, shall soon pass and we'll get through all this. So today we are working on the center block of London Blues. And as you already know, I am doing mine in different fabrics. So there is our center block today. Now we have gone through most of this already. So I have shown you how to do flying geese blocks and half square triangle blocks. Let's see, where do we have those? Oh, they're kind of everywhere. Half square triangles. There's... There's one right there. And so and so today what we're going to focus on is our corner uh, cutout blocks. What do they call them here? Sew and flip corners is what they call them on our sheet. By the way, we're working with pages 9 and 10. So this is a larger block today. I have already shown you in videos two, three, four, five, and eight, how to do flying geese. And I've shown you in uh, videos uh, one, five, six, and eight, or blocks one, five, six, and eight, how to do half square triangles. So you've had lots of exper experience already doing that. So today we're gonna focus on the sew and flip corners. Now you can choose to do the sew and flip corners as the directions tell you or you can do what I'm going to do and I'm going to show you again how to use the corner pop tool by Studio 180. I know I've shown this in previous videos. <clears throat> I'm not quite sure. Let's see, corner pop. I'm not seeing them right off hand here so maybe in some of my other videos I've showed you. Oh yes, here we go. On page four, you would have learned how to do a corner pop. So we're going to use our tool today, the corner pop tool, to do the uh, sew and flip on page nine. And you're also going to visit it again on... I believe on yes on page 10 as well so page 9 and 10 and 11 is going to be assembling the center block for London Blues so just as a recap again I have this on video 4 2 so as a recap we are going to cut our corner blocks at three and a quarter inches instead of two and a half like your instructions say. So if you've already cut yours at two and a half, uh, you will need to do the sew and flip as in the instructions. But many of you got my instructions ahead of time, so you were already aware that you would need bigger squares for this part. So I have cut my squares according to our directions in our tool. So the tool comes with wonderful directions with a chart in it to tell us what size folded corners we need. So if the published size in your pattern says two and a half, we're going to need three and a quarter inch. So I've cut mine at three and a quarter inch and then we need to cut those in half. And since we're going to trim down to perfect, you don't need to worry about exactness just yet. The next thing that you need to do is cut off your corner part. And for that, we'll use the tool. So this tool has a, let's see if I can slide it up a little bit. I'm bumping into things here. So according to our directions, you want to be very careful about this. For some reason, it makes sense to me if I am have a folded corner in my directions to cut 
from the two and a half inch corner away, but that's not true because you need to figure in that seam allowance. So actually read your instructions very carefully. You're going to check out the two inch corner here and lay your block at the two inch corner. I'm cramped for a little space here. I'm sorry, I'm getting a little off camera. So right there. So I have my two inch line here and my corner here. And I lay my ruler on it just like that. And I'll cut this corner off. All right. And then I'll take, many of you also know too that I just chose my fabrics from a single line. I'm not sure those two fabrics go together well, but I bet you once they get in the quilt, they will. We'll see how it goes. So I'm just going to eyeball the center. I can see I've got about as much overlay here as I do here. And I'm just going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance. <clears throat> I like to turn my auxiliary light on my sewing machine. I always sew off and on leaders and enders. And I'll go ahead and finger press. I like to finger press, especially when I'm on a uh, bias seam like that. And I also need to cut away, according to our directions, I'm going to cut away both sides. So I will go ahead and do that now while my iron is warming up. <coughs> Make sure I grab the right size. I want the two inch. So I just lay my two inch there. Make sure it's as perfect as can be. There's my cutter. And I'll grab another triangle here and sew that on as well. And then my iron is warmed up by now. Do a little finger press. And this is what it looks like at this point. So this is going to be a four and a half inch finish. So we need to trim it down. Now you can take your corner pop tool to trim it down as well. There are lines here for where your seam allowances go, and you would lay that right on. And there's also, I don't know how well you can see it, but there's a dotted line here for four and a half inches. I, however, prefer, there would be my four and a half. I prefer to use my Quilter Select non-stick ruler, or, or sticky ruler, I should say, actually. Um, it just grabs onto the fabric, and my fabric doesn't slide away underneath. So I'm just going to lay my 4.5 inch line here on the corner, and up here as well, lining it up. And then I will trim that way. Perfect, right there. And then I'll turn it around and trim the other side, laying my four and a half inch uh, left side and bottom side. And trim this off. So therefore, you know, if you do it the way the directions say, that works well too. You just need to uh, sew very precise. I like this better because it gives me a little bit of leeway in case I screw up or don't sew exactly just inside the line like the directions tell you. So there is my corner popped block. I'm going to make believe we make four more of those and then we will assemble this middle block. So you go ahead and do your flying geese and your 
half square triangle units you know how to do that and we'll meet you back here when we get it all put together page 10 tells us to sew four of these units together so let's go ahead and do that I'm going to press these seams apart. Okay, and now we'll take a look at our directions again. And we're told to make two sections as, ah, as shown. So I will just make sure I only have two and take these from page nine and sew those together. Okay, and there we have them sewn together. I really like how this line is straight across. I got lucky and it matched perfectly. And the next thing we need to do is sew our sew and flip corners from page nine to the ends. Make sure you have the dark corner pops or the dark corners facing up. So I have those units sewn together. I always like to take one last look and make sure that uh, I sewed them the same and that they look like the picture. And I'm happy with that. So there we go. On to our half square triangles, our hourglass units, throwing those together, and then we're almost to the end of this large center block. Okay, so I followed the steps to on page 10 to make the half square triangles here. I have my A triangles with fabric 10 and 11 and my B triangles with fabric 1 and 10. And then the directions tell us on the next step to cut those in half this way and then sew each of the halves together. I prefer not to do it that way. Um, just because we're on the we're on a bias again, and I would prefer to sew them together and then cut them apart just to avoid all that extra stretch. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my sew lines. And I know that I've showed you this in one of the previous videos and this is what we're we're making an hourglass block this time so I'll draw that one this one today is I believe December 29th, 2020. And we are currently having a rather large snowstorm here in South Dakota. And I hear my neighbors out plowing the snow. Probably too faint for you guys to hear it though. All right, so the next thing I'm gonna do is the directions had us press away from fabric 10. So what you want to do is snug up these two seams right here 
I like to make sure they're snug, especially right in the middle. And then I will sew on the two lines that I drew, and then I'll cut them apart. It just preserves that bias edge a little bit better. Make sure your fabric tins are opposite one another. And if you snug them up together, especially right in the middle, you'll have that perfect center match. Ha! Ah, ran out of thread. I thought I felt it. Okay, back in business. Now I can cut these two between the sew lines that I just sewed. I'm going to do both at the same time, corner to corner. All right, and there we're going to have our quarter square units. I'll just trim them up to I'll press them and trim them back up and I'll be right back. Okay, and I absolutely love using the Tucker trimmer to trim quarter square triangles. We're to trim this at four and a half inches. So if I find my four and a half inch dotted line here and here, and this follows a seam line and here's my four and a half across this way so right there smack dab in the middle is where this intersection needs to be so again you've seen this in other videos and you can see that our pattern designer gave us plenty to trim around makes it very easy We'll get a perfect four and a half inch block with our middle intersection exactly in the middle. No trying to figure out what half of four and a half inches is to find the middle and then trying to find that on the ruler. And there you have a perfect four and a half inch hourglass unit. And I'll go trim my other three up, and we'll put this baby together. There it is. I did get it finished. I, I'm really liking the fabric. I wasn't sure I was going to at first, but I think it's turning out very nicely. I love it. I love how the corners matched. I like it. All right, middle block done. Next stop, I believe, is going to be borders.